Welcome back. Uh, we continue on our never-ending saga, or so it seems, um, to solve all the problems. So, um, here we are back at the Advent of Code webpage. Um, so you may see here a circle around um, my last solution. Um, so we've spent about six hours together working on that, at least I believe that's the case. Um, so uh, the inclination I had, the algorithm I had in mind, um, was uh, actually the one you needed to solve it. I was just thinking about the, the data in a wrong way. So uh, day 12 talks about these moons orbiting Jupiter and uh, how often are they going to repeat um, their positions. Turns out you should just break up the repetition into X dimension, Y dimension, and Z dimension and figure out the period within each dimension. So it wasn't a matter of a moon having a period, even though it does. It was a matter of um, finding the period within each dimension and then finding the least common multiple of those periods. So I had the right general idea, but I the way I had coded things was completely backwards, so uh, I'm just not that great at coding, but I'm creative, so um, we'll try to be more accurate in the future. Um, I do admit, to solve day 12, I did end up looking for solutions online to see who's coded this before. Just give me the number and I'll see if I can get my code to generate the same number. Um, because actually before going to get solutions online, I had coded something and I had an off by one error in my code. It's like I had the right idea and I was just flailing about for hours. So at that point, I'm like, you know, I, I have the right idea. And if any sort of human who could give me a hint, um, would give me the info I needed there. So I did independently solve it, just had an off by one problem, flailed a lot, around a lot, um, and then saw somebody else's solution. I'm like, well, that's the same thing as what I did, except I just had a typo. It was great. Uh, the wonderful thing about uh, computers is that they do exactly what you tell them to do, um, whether you realize it or not. Unless there's some hardware defect, in which case you're screwed, but eh, what can you do? All right, so day 14, let's go. Space stoichiometry. As you approach the rings of Saturn, your ship's low fuel indicator turns on. There isn't any fuel here, but the rings have plenty of raw material. Perhaps your ship's interstellar refinery union brand nanofactory can turn these raw materials into fuel. You ask the nanofactory to produce a list of the reactions it can perform that are relevant to this process. Your puzzle input. Every reaction inputs uh, some quantity of specific input chemicals into or converts that uh, into some quantity of an output chemical. Almost every chemical is produced by exactly one reaction. The only exception or is the raw material input to the entire process and is not produced by reaction. Here, let me scroll down a bit. You will just need to show how much ore you'll need to collect before you can produce one unit of fuel. Each reaction gives specific quantities for its input and output. Reactions cannot be partially run, so only whole integer multiples of these quantities can be used. It's okay to have leftover chemicals when you're done, though. For example, reaction 1A, 2B, 3C converts to 2D, means that exactly two units of chemical D can be produced by com uh, consuming exactly 1A, 2B, and 3C. You can run the full reaction as many times as necessary. For example, you could produce um, 10D. I'm struggling to read that on this edge of my monitor here by consuming 5A, 10B, and 15C. Suppose your nanofactory produces the following set of reactions. And okay, you get the basic idea, right? 
or this set of reactions. The above list of reactions uh, requires 165 ore to produce one fuel. Here are some larger examples. Given the list of reactions in your puzzle input, what is the minimum amount of ore required to produce exactly one fuel? <sighs> so, um, I admit, like, I read this back in December before we took our big hiatus from Advent of Code. And the reason for the hiatus was that I was stuck both on uh, Day 12 Part 2 and a bit intimidated by this one. Um, I wanted to make sure I had the right algorithm in mind before I started trying to code it this time. Um, and I've tried to give this a lot of creative thought, and it occurs to me that like brute force really is the only answer here. Um, so what we're going to be... The ideal solution, I believe, would be a um, either a breadth first search or a nearest first search, or however that turns out. You basically want to make sure that you're not going to go infinitely deep into any node in a search tree when you're doing a variety of chemical reactions. Um, so now occurs to me that my earlier conclusions are wrong, um, that uh, we should just suppose that you have an infinite supply of ore and that you want to see what happens if you keep adding more and more ore, what are all the reactions that you could generate. Um, so that's one way to solve this. There may be more efficient solutions uh, for a very, very uh, large chemical reactions. Perhaps it makes more sense to try to work the tree backwards from uh, the one fuel to here's all the things that could have produced the one fuel. But I'm thinking that going forwards in a breadth first uh, search with memoization, that is building up a table of here is your initial amount of ore, and you can convert that to these things, and you can convert those things to these things, and so forth. Um, I'm not sure if there's a guarantee against um, a cycle, like an infinite loop. Yeah, maybe there is a way to do that, but not that I've seen in the puzzle input anyhow. Um, so I'm thinking a breadth first search is probably a reasonable approach for the scope of this problem. They're not expecting to make this anywhere near as spooky as day 12, except I was super spooked because day 12 was a mess and I want all my solutions to be efficient and um, there, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm over optimizing my solutions because I want this to show, like, I want the code to be readable to even a child. So, um, I have standards that are ridiculous given uh, the constraints that are imposed upon me here. So anyway, I went together and, or I put together this, uh, problem 14 source code. Um, wrote a parser that takes like descriptions that are one or two this five that and can convert that into a string and an int um, I call that a mixture um, I know this problem calls it uh, an input chemical and an output chemical except chemicals are not separatable by physical means and mixtures are so we're calling it a mixture um, and here's a, the dictionary of reactions that uh, specifies for a given set of mixtures. Wait, I didn't need to do that. A set of mixture no longer makes sense. My, my data structure has gone through many iterations off stream. Um, so here I ultimately produced um, a mixture which is mapping a string to an int, where a string represents uh, a certain type of resource, and the int is the quantity. So what I'm actually talking about here is a map of mixture to mixture. Um, 
And of course, this is going to cause things to break uh, in terms of what's in my unit test. Um, so, but I like that I can now have this data type mixture that I can pass around more easily. So apply for, uh, this is not going to be a sequence of string. This is going to be just a straight up mixture. Uh, reaction map is equal to for each input, blah. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, apply. No, this is the. Hang on. This is the React method outside of the uh, reaction map. This is going to actually perform the reactions when I implement that, which is just going to look up the value that's in the reaction map, um, which actually is a singleton. So, okay. Backing up, in Scala there's uh, a couple, at least two constructs. One of them I've been using quite a bit is called case class, which represents an immutable stateful thing. So like when I say five pounds or one inch or three miles or uh, one gallon, anything that is a immutable um, concept can be represented as a state class, I think. Or generally that there's this kind of mapping between them. So here, when I say case class of mixture, um, I'm talking about here is some combination of strings that are in some quantity. Um, and let's see, here we had a reaction map that takes a mixture and produces a mixture. Um, and so another kind of uh, entity, I don't know, I'm kind of struggling to come up with the word, a type in Scala would be an object. And this is a singleton that exists within the scope of the larger class or case class here. So this object singleton is a factory that produces a reaction map out of its apply method that takes a sequence of strings. Um, so each string here is re uh, representing a line in the problem input. So we've got all that behind us, right? <laughs> um, so this says take all the inputs and produce. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What am I doing here? It's been too long since I wrote even this bit of skeleton code. Um, so this parenthesis matches up with the one at the end. Inputs, map, input split on the arrow, split on the comma, map to mixture type. Um, so that takes this mixture uh, factory up here that takes uh, strings and parses each string splitting on the arrow, right? No. Um, no, I'm sorry, this air, I got that completely wrong. This has a parser that splits on what? Find prefix match of, now where did I define my parser again? Oh, up here. All right, so this takes a string that consists of uh, some positive numeric type. I mean, I guess this theoretically could support a zero, but this is always positive in my use of it. And um, just a word, which is a whole sequence of characters without a space in it. They're all A through Z or zero through nine um, or an underscore. So this... This down here is splitting by lines. This is taking each line and reading uh, the things on the... Uh, well, this is also splitting by commas. Um, so this maps each attribute that's delimited by a comma into a mixture and then converts those mixtures into a set. 
which I no longer want to do. And then on the right hand of the conversion, uh, some other resource is produced, um, which also doesn't, oh no, here it is. Here's the conversion to the mixture. It's right there. Um, so I don't have an operation to add to mixtures and I need that. So I fixed my data types and my code won't compile because um, I got rid of the set type here. And this is saying, whoa, 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 you, you said you were going to produce this reaction map. And the reaction map consists of a mapping of mixtures to mixtures. And here I'm producing a mapping of sets of mixture to mixture, which doesn't make sense. Um, this needs something like, uh, I was going to say fold, but fold requires an initial value. I want something that can take mixtures and add them together. Um, so, oh my goodness, I can't believe I'm already having to define um, an operator for addition. How do you add two maps in Scala? So, I mean, I could say def add input uh, mixture, producing a mixture equals, and I'm not sure how to produce the map here because it's possible there may be some overlap in the keys between these two mixtures. Except in this case, because when I'm constructing it, um, the left side of any given equation uh, or conversion here, uh, all these resources are unique. But that's not guaranteed to be true in the future, but we don't have to consider that right now. So, um, I can't just say map resources. Um, input dot resources that uh, what I'm wanting to do is combine the two but uh, but that's not gonna work but here I'm not interested in producing uh, this m I am interested in doing a mapping but two set at the end is not what I'm interested in doing um, so here you have a sequence of mixtures and I want to, I don't know, reduce by ad addition or something. I don't think that's valid syntax at all. Um, yeah, so everything about this is wrong. That's okay. So let's see if we can fix this first. So we um, going to look up what is defined in a Scala map. Scala map data type. Uh, put. Is there a put all? No. There is a put. Oh my goodness. So, I mean, I could for now do this, even though this isn't right. All right, so not found resources. Oh, you're correct. I meant to put that up here inside. Uh, not the singleton, but inside the case class. Um, did you mean get or sum? Um, I don't know. <sighs> da, da, da. And there's all kinds of syntactic sugar, too. Um, 
So I want to say Scala map put all, except there's no mutable. This is an immutable map, so this isn't going to work either. Um, you can add an element by assigning a key to a value, add multiple elements, remove multiple elements, update elements. How do I produce? Oh wait, wasn't it like double colon equal or something? Um, immutable. Yeah. Concatenate immutable maps. So, oh, it's just plus plus. But that does an overwrite operation. Um, either way. You're wanting to do something like this. Uh, okay, this produces a, uh, a map. And if I want this data type to be a mixture, I've got to rebox it. Uh, that's ridiculous. But my data types are ridiculous, so who am I to complain? My data types are so ridiculous. Um, all right. So we did our map combination. Um, yeah, kind of regretting having a thing called mixture now. Even if it'll help make sense of things later, it, it requires me to write all this additional code um, to unbox and box things. Um, Well, map doesn't have a way to combine and add the elements while combining. Um, union addition. Has anybody come up with a way? Yeah. Best way to merge maps and sum by key. Uh, solution. Scala Z has the concept of a semigroup, which captures what you want to do here and arguably has the shortest and cleanest solution. So map one, map two. Oh. Okay. Well, um, that could work. Kind of. Uh, okay, yeah. And if I want to avoid Scala Z for now, um, a way to do this would be um, resources. So map to dot map. Uh, and here we have an inner scope. Within that scope, we say case key value, um, key, here's the expression we want to evaluate it to, map one dot get or else k0. So if I'm wanting to avoid the syntactic sugar of um, Scala Z, this is the cleanest solution, um, except it's not called map one. Here I called it resources. So yeah, this, um, that's a solution that looks entirely valid. Um, I'd like to add the hint that plus plus replaces any key value from the left side of the plus plus from the right side. If the key already exists in the left side, uh, okay, yeah, that just explains how it works. Kind of neater version for key value AA plus plus BB. Oh wow, dear. Uh, some people have really code golfed this thing. I think this is the simplest solution to understand without importing uh, semigroups. Um, but I wonder if uh, Scala 3 is going to go in the direction of Scala Z. Um,
Plus, I don't even know if I have that library locally, although it wouldn't be hard to obtain. Wait, in Scala library, there is something. There's a merged function, but it's only present in hash map, not in map. And the signature itself is a bit cumbersome. Um, but apparently it's more performant than this solution. Wait, now somebody else produced... Um, <laughs> wait, what's going on? Oh, no, they produced the same thing. They just had a different way of spelling the word for, basically. They used uh, a for loop instead of a map construct. Um, by map, now I'm referring to this map and not the map data type. So anyway, this um, not found value add. So here, uh, I guess to do this add thing, um, not sure how I get, I don't have like free functions or anything like that, so um, let's see. Uh, is there some syntactic sugar that I can use here to keep it looking something like that? Scala reduce method um, reference. Wait, why am I doing this? Well, no, it makes sense. Reduce does what I think it does. It like takes a sequence and reduces it down to a single value. Um, in this case, it takes all these maps and reduces them into a single map using that above operation. Okay, so yeah. Um, so can I do underscore add underscore please let that work because I defined add above nice and add might be an ugly way to spell like combine or some other term but um, that's maybe one of the cooler things I've done in Scala today at least um, your add refers to this add up here well you know what I'm talking about this one um, so now I have a map followed by a reduce. The proper way to spell that is collect, to, to save an iteration, or fold or something like that. But um, this is already difficult enough for me to follow. Um, and if I throw in a collect, then I have to use case. Um, Uh, so, plus, like, I'm boxing things here. I'm giving my, I'm changing the data type, so that's okay. We don't have so many inputs that it merits trying to process the input more efficiently. Um, still, okay, get add problem 14, get log. We're going to rewrite history here, get... Commit, amend, reset, author, get push F. So our code goes up to the GitHub um, from where it's actually going to kick off a um, GitHub Actions. It's going to do some CI, CD stuff uh, and run all the tests. So it's going to run the trivial test that I haven't shown you yet. Uh, let's take a minute to look at it. So we got problem 14, spec. So here I've got, there's a string, which is a C, or there's a sequence of strings. Um, and oh, that's about it. Oh, 
Okay, so now that map produces a reaction map that has six entries. So, good enough. That was my version 1.0 uh, test. While I was still trying to figure out what should my construct here be, and ultimately it took me forever to settle on this should be a map of strings to ints. I uh, just had like the worst, I don't know, creative block until I got through day 12. And having gotten through day 12, now we can start to do things. Like here we've got um, a way to add a mixture to a mixture. Um, here we've got the reaction map. And it's somewhere I want to define this react, and I'm not sure that the map is the right place to do it. Um, it's going to require a map, and it's going to require um, a mixture to begin with. So the most primitive way to do a reaction would be um, just look up inside the map does it contain this mixture? And if so, uh, there you go. Just look up what the result is. So maybe this is the place. I never really liked this name anyway. Um, what else can I call this? What does the problem call it? So our problems tend to use several different ways of describing, um, I'm sorry, this problem statement tends to describe the same problem multiple different ways. It's just so it's perfectly clear to the person solving the problem um, how to interpret uh, the problem. But also, this uh, statement tries to avoid any unclear, loaded, or ambiguous language things that have too much meaning or not enough meaning or a different meaning. Um, so here, this keeps talking about inputs and outputs and I find that frustrating because it'd be great. I guess nano factory is the word. Um, I don't like the word nano there, but factory I'll go with. Um, reaction map factory there we go good enough um, and that's gonna break my test so we need to do the same reaction here or the same change there and we'll do the whole um, rewriting the history thing again and push that again so just in case my computer melts down in the next five seconds, uh, the data will be safe somewhere else. Um, so we've produced a factory that can do a reaction. Um, so um, this is where I was flailing a bit the other day. Version 1.0 of this can be um, Ah, uh, reactions.get or else. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Um, I'm missing something here. No, I'm not, am I? Get or else for key reagents. So you end up with the same result unless, um, well, that didn't work. Uh, it didn't work because I forgot a character. Um, let's try that. There we go. So you get the value based on this set of reagents. Else, um, oh, and the other word I should be thinking about is product. Um, so react is a bad word. Produce is a better word. Um, so uh, produce causes a, a reaction, but it might not. In the case where it doesn't, you get back the reagents, but otherwise you get the product back, um, which is just 
the uh, element on the other side of the map. So this ultimately is not the answer. This is just the simplest way uh, to interpret the data. So now I want to add a test corresponding to what I just coded here because I should have written the test first because I should have understood what I was trying to do. So let's work slightly backwards. We're afoul of Fowler's method, but that's okay. Um, so we've read this. Um, not too impressed by that test. Uh, actually, this should be like a fixture used for the rest of the problem. Um, mm -mm. We're going to need that. So, um, reactions should do something. And here I want to check if I do reactions dot produce based on um, a mixture a problem 14 dot mixture of um, I don't know one of these things 10 or this is gonna assert is 6 equal to that value <laughs> no 6 is not equal to the uh, to the result here what is produced by 10 or is 10 a Ta-da! All right. Um, however, or like here's our recipe book here. 10 or can produce 10a. Um, uh, one or can produce 1b. So let's see if I take away nine or we get this instead. Um, 7a and 1b can produce 1c. Um, so to produce 1c, we take do, 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 7a comma, whoops, yeah, 1b. Oops, we failed. <laughs> All right, uh, 7a and 1b produces 1c. Um, so the problem here is that uh, that uh, my abstraction is not particularly great. 1b. So yeah, I'm not able to parse this comma here. I really should just fix that instead of what I am fixing right here. But uh, there we go. Um, and we want to verify that 7a and 1c can produce a d. And 7a and a d can produce an e. Seven A and one E can produce a fuel. So yeah, all our reactions um, should um, create products. All right, nice. Uh, I guess there's really no need to assert this here. That's kind of a silly assertion. There's no harm in it, though. Okay, so we're going to commit again and push again. 
save that off. Um, so at this point, we've concluded that um, a couple things. One, I should go fix this parser up here. This should not take a, I'm sorry, I should take, fix this here. That takes an input of string. Make this capable of accepting a input of sequence of string. Um, looks like here I'm taking, how am I doing this? I'm doing a map to mixture, having done the split here already. And then I'm having to combine everything afterward. Um, and that's kind of ugly. Um, so one solution could be I could just do that split operation. Or I could do all that stuff I'm doing outside um, in class factory. I could do inside this. Or that I'm doing an object factory. I could do an object mixture. Um, yeah, that's doable. Um, mm -mm. Oh, wait, here. Here would be a fine enough place to put it. Um, input dot split dot map. And map will take uh, a string s and do the following. And where am I? Oh, here's input being used. Um, so that's one way to do it. Um, and then I want to take those mapped things and um, reduce them like that. Except I need the second um, operator there. All right, so I can take this split map reduce and just cut out the split and the reduce at the end. And the good news is this is all under version control, so if I screw up, I can undo things. That's, uh, all right, unknown, unexpected data type. Um, oh, right, right, right. Uh, this split splits on um, a comma and a space. Like that. All right. So, you. Wait. That's not what I expected. Overloaded method apply with alternatives. Um, ew, what have I done here? Why are there alternatives? So there's this mixture and this mixture. Um, one accepting resources. Oh, really? Neither of these is a good match? Why? What's the data type of the thing I'm passing into um, map down here? I guess that's the problem is the data types undecided between those two types cannot be applied to char. Um, so this here Yes, we have split it on the arrow and said get element zero, which would be the left hand side of a reaction definition on the left there. Um, yeah, why? What's the, how is this a char? And this is saying with alternatives because it thinks neither of these is a good match. Um, Oh, hang on. So inputs map, input split on that. Yeah, I've done something silly down here. I have tried to save too many keys. 
um, or tried to save too many uh, characters. I've done way too much colored golfing for my own good, for my level of proficiency, and really for anybody's good. So here we take a se sequence of inputs. Um, factory. I mean, yes, we are going to produce a... Okay, no. I am producing just a single factory from this input. So we're taking this, splitting it on the arrow, taking the left element, and producing a mixture out of that. But we don't need to call map to do that here. We just... Um, We can do what we're doing on the right hand side. What? How does that match up to that parenthesis? What have I done? What's this one at the end match up to? They do all the parentheses match, which makes no sense. So I don't want to do this dot map mixture here. I want some scope. Uh, wait, I've done something incredibly dumb. That's kind of funny. So I'm taking <laughs> the input, splitting it into a tuple, than from the tuple producing a map. Um, does that make sense? Inputs dot map, this dot to map. I should do some pre-processing before trying to build this factory instance. Because sure, the factory does accept a map of mixture to mixture, but like it actually makes some sense to produce that map and then cast it into a factory. Um, because I don't understand what the data type um, is that's within this here. been too long since I've looked at my own code. I want to take each input and from each input I don't think I'm looking to generate a tuple. Um, I mean sure that's kind of what I ended up with. No. Okay so this matches with that. So there is a mixture and there is another mixture, and the tests do pass, but I still don't understand how. My input is a sequence of string. So I'm producing, oh, I'm sorry. Let me, let me go back to my earlier thought, which is that there's an easier way to do this now that I've looked up the way of defining a map um, using this arrow here, you can construct a map uh, with multiple values populated inside it. And uh, further, I'm going to do what I threatened to do earlier here and actually split this up. So let's strip out whatever crud that's confusing me until I can start making sense of this again. So, um, oh, yeah, that was the problem is I didn't know if I could guarantee that I always have two values, one on the left, one on the right, but I know that. Um, let's see. So, um, in 
put dot split. Put the arrow here. And that's not really great either. Um, wait, how did I do my parser up here? Yeah, here's a regex for a parser. Uh, am I really going to call these parser 1 and parser 2? And if so, which, goes, which gets which number? Um, but... Let's see. So the operator in between is this goofy little arrow. And we're going to put dot star within each side of this. Um, I'm actually going to call this parser 1 and this parser 2. I don't like the names at all. Names are hard. Naming is a difficult thing to do. Um, hang on, so I have this, so there's no need to split on arrow anymore. We've got a match based on parser1, um, which we know is going to succeed. And from this, now we can what? Uh, we can produce a factory of map of... Well, that's the problem here, is that I'm trying to take all the lines in the file. Um, yeah, like a simple map here would be... I just take the two elements uh, the same way I did here. Um, without the whole two int thing there. And so like here I could produce um, a map of mixture of this to a mixture of that. So this is the thought that keeps recurring to me. Um, it's like, hey, now I've got a map. And great, except um, there's more inputs to consider. So that's what confused me. Um, so, so I am doing a bit of black magic. Um, this whole notion that I can take thing take this sequence and easily some other way produce a map of numerous values out of it it's kind of bogus um, so it's not so much about code golfing but about um, this is just a really ugly way to produce um, like I'm taking a sequence of string and converting the sequence of string into a map. Um, and then I'm boxing that in a factory. And while I could do that final boxing as a separate step, it doesn't really improve readability any. All the complexity is in the fact that I'm converting a sequence into a map via to map. Um, and this sequence is getting converted into um, two element tuples. Um, now maybe there's something with this internal conversion, like where I shouldn't have to split this twice. That would make some sense, but... Um, yeah. That's ugly. Yeah, the reason it's ugly is because of the sequence to map conversion. The fact that we have this split in here twice is just a minor aberration that if we wanted to, we could clean it up and save some processing power. But uh, status, get add problem 14 and commit that. 
push it again just in case things melt down. Um, so, okay. So our source code is almost readable. It's almost slide code. Which is scary because I didn't decide this problem. This problem was already put out there and I'm writing code for it. So. Um, yeah. The rest of this is going to be a mess. So like here we see produce and that it just says do a simple lookup and if you find something in this dictionary of reactions that's what you produce otherwise just return the input value well it's not that simple um, what this needs to do is causing my brain to break a little bit here but um, this should produce not um, the return type here shouldn't be mixture. Right now it is. Um, the return type should be uh, a set of all the mixtures that can be produced. Um, that's something I could just say set here and whoop de doo but. Um, of course, this breaks all the tests. Um, so we can go back to our tests. Well, hang on. We should have started with the test, but also now if I go back and rewrite the test to this new spec, this is actually more difficult. Um, I don't know if like I can break this into two functions before I start testing it, because I really want to test the simpler of the two functions which is just the same as the old function definition. Um, so I need another verb. So I guess the verb I'm going to go with is mix. And so this is just going to produce a simple mixture. Um, Oh, this is interesting too. <sighs> like if I were being a purist here, um, if I were being a purist, I would make um, uh, mix there optionally return a value um, or return an optional value instead it's returning a mixture it would be more correct to make this return um, what's the yeah, I should look this up the Scala form of an option I think Java calls it an optional Scala calls it an option type is that right? Scala.option So this should sometimes produce that. And let's see. So, oh, and then it can fall to this. Uh, like that. Of course, our tests all fail here because I changed um, the name of the method. So now I'm going to go back and try to fix my tests here. Whoops. I forgot I have this big epic problem description down there. Uh, da, da, da. Jeez. So I took, I downloaded this in advance. Um, okay, so it's on these lines in question, not the remainder of the problem. Yeah, produce is used all over the place, so... Um, I kind of wish this had some of the 
um, convenience that was built into other languages. Uh, Kotlin kind of gets it right in terms of, um, so now I've got all these optional types and I have to unbox them. So mixture did not equal some mixture. Oh yeah, sum is the implementer of the uh, option. Uh, so reactions.mix right here and I can say get, is that correct? Or dot get, I'm not sure if it matters which I try. Um, value get is not a member of the mixture. I think I put that in the wrong scope. Uh, put it here. Uh, get is not a member of Boolean, so the dot is required. Ew. Oh well. All right, all right. So we're verifying these things actually do get returned when we go do the lookups, and there you go. Beautiful, as always. Um, so I expected that to be more painful. Uh, so what more do I have to do here? Um, I do intend to break at some point because this is going to require more energy and focus than I have at present. Um, I've been trying to wrap it up, but at the same time, keep coming up with more ideas. And my fear of having ideas is like why I wanted to, uh, my fear of actually having ideas and then um, not having done this um, is why I went ahead with this, uh, with this session today, even though I'm exhausted. So, yeah. Um, I think though at this point I have run out of ideas. Um, so we've got mix, which attempts to do a mixing of uh, these reagents. Here, chemicals might be a best name for this. I'm not sure. Because um, they're not reagents if they don't react. So, resource is another word for this. Um, yeah, so these may or may not react. Uh, so again, we're going to change uh, the naming. This doesn't affect um, how the code functions. It's just trying to improve the naming so I don't go mad trying to interpret it later. Um, so we have come up with a way to, uh, I'm sorry, here we're looking up um, whether or not a reaction is possible. Um, I wonder if this set uh, I don't know, like, if you can define a set and then have an element multiply defined in the initializer. Um, I could look this up. It would be easier to look up than to actually code it for some reason, because I can't think of how to code this in a way that um, won't break my code. Uh, Scala set initialization. Yeah, I don't think the elements have to be unique. Uh, for this to initialize correctly. Of course, nobody's going to show an example where you create a set of um, duplicated elements. Because that's what lists and other data types are for. So, you know, what this requires now is a looking up of all the values that are in the reaction map and seeing what can be produced in a single reaction here. Um, and there's a problem 
and that the key type here is mixture. And, uh, uh, well, so we saw in the problem definition that's kind of necessary. You need to specify you need uh, this many A and this many B to produce this many AB. Um, so you do need to specify both a type and a quantity in the key. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, I could define subtract, can't I? No. Oh my goodness, subtract makes my brain melt. At this point, I probably do need to start using um, whatever that type from Scala Z was. Um, that it's capable of combining maps, doing at least addition, a semi-group. I don't know if it's possible with semi-groups to do subtraction. Um, I'm going to look it up just to not leave you guys hanging. Is it possible to do subtraction with semi-groups? Um, uh, Google doesn't give an obvious answer right away. Some research is required. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm not seeing a obvious answer one way or the other. A lot of people do find semi-groups interesting, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's easy. Like, we know that for a money data type, um, obviously you can take dollars and cents and do conversions between dollars and cents while you're adding or subtracting. Um, and certainly that's possible. Um, oh. Wait, does this site, this canoldus.com, forgive me if I'm mispronouncing that. Um, but yeah, that seems to answer the question that you can do addition with semi-groups. Um, if you need to ints, floats, etc. But I don't see a subtraction example here. I guess subtraction would be adding a negative amount. Unless, I don't know. So you can produce an implementation of addable... I don't really see the more complex stuff here. We do know in the real world you can subtract money. You could take a dollar. If somebody's charging 50 cents for an item, you can bring your $1 bill over to them, and they will give you 50 cents of change um, while you do the purchase for the item. Um, so that's a somewhat different concept but still illustrates that if you were to use a semi-group for that there would be a subtract operation here what baffles me is um, it might not be possible to do some subtractions um, if all members of the key are underrepresented or if any member of the key is underrepresented here so while this is doing a simple lookup another way to do this would be to go through uh, take, uh, have the definition, no, mix, you want to leave mix alone. Mix is fine. Uh, it's more there for testing purposes than for actual use, but you could say that for each subset here of chemicals, see whether any subset of these can be mixed. Um, so that's another thought. I'm not sure if uh, in any of the problem uh, things, yeah, representations, if any of these, um, whether the same combination of resources or chemicals on the left um, can produce multiple things. 
that would seem contrary to our understanding of how um, chemical combinations work, but I don't see anything specifically forbidding it. So anyway, that's a lot of food for thought. Um, and I'm going to cut it short here so that I'm not flailing about for the next couple hours, and so we can come back focused next time and break through and bring Santa one step closer to home. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.